This Wrath of the Lich King classic, casual friendly. So for the casual players watching this video, we're going to go through some of the main concerns you are very likely having about playing the game. Such as, does it take too long to level up? Will I need to find the guild to enjoy the game? Do I need to raid every week? Is the content difficult? And is there a huge barrier to actually get into the end game content? And will I need adult nappies and a Mountain Dew dispenser machine in order to keep up with everyone else? So how long does it take to level up in Wrath of the Lich King Classic? Well, for most- I think it's pretty fast. I, I think Wrath Classic, especially with Joyous Journeys buff, whenever they add that back into the game, I think Wrath Classic leveling is great. Most people, if you're doing it fairly efficiently, is going to be between 124 to 160 hours, so between five to seven days playtime. So if you played at least four hours a day, it would take you an entire month to get to max level. But let's say you play a little bit more. Realistically, most people that play the game are going to get the boost. Or on the weekends, like eight hours, and then you could smash it in the ballpark of three weeks. Now, this may seem like a long time. Yeah, it is. And then you're probably worried you're going to be behind everyone else. You are. But you really don't need to worry about this because Blizzard have made many changes to the end game content, which allow you to catch up on gearing up faster than ever before there's for instance heroic plus dungeons that now will drop raid loot there's phase one raids like naxxramas that have a bigger loot pool plus 10 man is now dropping 25 man loot not to mention how it's so easy to get badges that could be spent on getting even better gear so yes the leveling does take a while Sometimes they do put on a 50% experience buff called the Joyous Journeys buff. We'll probably see that return towards the end of this phase. I don't know why they didn't... I, I don't know why they took this away. Like, I could see them taking it away at the beginning or, like, having it not work over level 70, which would be smart. But I think this should just always be in the game. But my biggest piece of advice here is to just chill and enjoy the journey. This is an MMO at the end of the day. A big part of a game. I think a lot of people just want to get caught up to their friends. I think Wrath, I mean, realistically, if you have friends that are playing the game, they're probably going to tell you to just buy the boost and how much time it's going to save. And most people are just going to buy the boost. That's realistically what's going to happen. It'll take them about 20 hours, maybe 30, yeah, probably more like 30 hours, 40 hours to get through like the entire questing and all that. I mean, again, these are your first time players. So it will take them a lot longer than it would take, like, you know, somebody who's leveled 10 times before. But, uh, you know, after that, you do Alduar, you can do, like, the first few bosses, you do Nax, etc. You can get caught up to speed in a month. ...is just jumping into this huge Which world and fine. going around exploring. You don't have to get to Endgame to enjoy the game. It's just a different part of the game. And my second piece of advice is to play on a server. I do think that in general, again, people people come into MMOs like this. There are people that just, they see the game, they're like, I'm going to try this out myself. But a lot of people are playing the game because their friends play the game. And it's not that important to them, the journey, because they want to have that journey with their friends. With a good population so that you can enjoy group content while leveling and obviously later for when you do get to end game but i would avoid the mega servers as a casual player as these can be very elitist and toxic so for instance for eu i would avoid servers like gehenna's fimo goldmag in us it's going to be things like feralina i really hate the fact that benediction is locked it makes me fucking furious even though i have a server yeah don't say feralina yeah um it's not locked anymore? Oh, it is? Transfers are locked. Oh, oh, so I so I can I can transfer my character to Benediction now? You can't transfer, only create new ones. Oh, I can't transfer. Okay, well then who cares? Benediction so and dumb. Grobulus. My advice, if you want to play Alliance, come on the server Pyroid EU. That is my server, and in my humble opinion, the best server in the world. I would always advise people to play on the most populated server. If you are a new player, play on the most populated server. There are no downsides, there are only upsides. 
And if you want to go on Horde, go and play on Mograine. Those are the two servers with a decent population that aren't locked or totally dead. Now for US servers, if you want to play Alliance, the only really good option is ATS, and this is a West Coast server, or the Westfall East Coast server, but that's mm -hmm. slightly less populated. And if you want to play Horde, the only option really is the Aragal Oceanic server, or Irankius, which is an East Coast server. You don't want to play in a server with a small population because as a casual player, it will make it harder for you to enjoy the end game content or even the low level. Yeah, because you won't be able to find a group, man. People say like, oh, you haven't seen the queues on launch. I would rather have really bad launch queues than not be able to do the raids. Like, I don't want to sit in queue for four hours because we can't find one person for Old War 10 Man. This is awful. Why am I dealing with this? level content to be honest because it's just going to be that much more difficult it to sucks. find a group now if you only care about leveling solo in the game then yeah you know you can go and play on any low populated realm that you want i will leave the ironforge pro link in the description yeah, but only tracks play on the most populated a rough estimation of server population based on warcraft log data and the fastest way to level in this game is to definitely get the rested xp add-on this is a power leveling guide that tells you all the best routes, all the best death skips, all the secret quests to pick up along the way for extra XP and everything like that. You'll find that in the description. And if you don't want to get rest XP, you can check out my power leveling guide, which I'll leave a link to the description also. So, will you need a guild to just buy the boost? Enjoy the end game content, and will you have to commit to a raid schedule every week? Definitely not. If you're on one of these big servers, there'll be multiple there organized pubs every week right for there. the latest raid that's, that's just come about. out, or the raids from the last tier. Big dick. And a lot of time, there's these on-the-spot pugs that you can just jump into also. Oh, yeah. I don't play on the biggest server in the world, there's always people making groups. So what you need to do, obviously, is get Discord and start joining pug channels. Or normally they are guild channels or an alternative guild channel where they host all their pugs. Remember, you can actually make groups on Discord, like you can see how I have. All of my Pug Discords are in one group, so I can check, you know, which guilds are doing Pugs that week without having to look at the looking for group chat, which normally means I can get in there early and get signed up, increasing the chance of me getting into the group. Oh, bro, like, that would just drive me crazy. I would not want to do any of that. I'm going to be honest. Like, I, I would either join a guild or just, like, join an on-the-spot Pug. It's too much work, yeah. It's, I just want to play the game, man. You can also join the server Discord. Every server normally does have a server Discord. Mm -hmm. Just ask someone on the server f yeah, for I'm them to the give it to you. Discord. I would also recommend joining a guild as a social because at the end of the day, it's what this game is all about. And many guilds will want to make pub it's, groups. That's not true. It's about the loot, but okay. For their alts, and you'll be able to sign up early to guarantee yourself a spot because guildies, or at least they should, Always take guildies over a pug. Remember, charisma point. Don't take guild members over a pug. If you have somebody that you don't want to take in your guild, kick them out of the guild. And then invite the person that you want to take into your guild instead. There's a little fun fact there. Points are very important if you want to get caught up to everyone else and just in general get your character geared up. Now, do you need to raid every week in this game? Well, if you want to be a top passer and do the hardest content that the game has to offer, like all the hard modes and the heroic raids later, then yeah, you definitely need to be raiding at least twice a week. I don't really think so. I think maybe at the beginning you do, but you're going to get the gear. The raids are piss easy. You just need to get a group of people that have a pulse, that have a monitor, that have an internet connection, and get them in there and have them do what they're supposed to do and the boss dies. It's so fucking easy. So this will at least require eight hours of your time and I would say an extra two hours on top of that just to get your character enchanted or to farm a little bit of gold for consumables. I mean, if you are looking mm -hmm. to make 500 gold every single day, that will only require 20 minutes of your time. You subscribe to the channel, my subscriber only video will tell you how to do that. Another way to get 500 gold every day is to buy it on uh, a website or to buy WoW tokens and then trade it for uh, Wrath of the Lich King gold. 
But if you want to raid just for fun, then, I mean, you really don't need to join a guild and raid eight hours a week, mm -hmm. to be honest. But you do need to raid at least a little bit to keep on top of your gear, because oh, yeah. pugs will require a gear score requirement. Because, unfortunately, the gear score epidemic has totally taken over the game now. Well, nobody wants to play with somebody who's garbage. That's why it's an issue. You don't want to invite somebody into your group that's bad. Because if you do that, then you waste your time. You only want to invite people that are good. Because if you invite bad players, you don't kill bosses. I know that very well. You should be able to get enough gear score from Heroic Plus and the old raids to catch mm -hmm. up. Especially if you're in a class that's in higher demand, like a tank or a healer. But if you're trying to plug later on in a phase, it will likely be much more difficult because then people want much smoother runs and will ask for a higher gear score requirement, yep. especially on these mega servers, which is why joining a guild even... That's one thing about it, right, is that why would you invite a warrior that has 213 item level if you can invite a warrior who has 225 eye level? I mean, they're both random signups. You've got nothing else to go off of. It's not like, oh, well, one of these guys you played with before, well, then that's totally different. But assuming all other conditions are equal, you're going to take the guy with better gear. As a social is a way forward, just so you can join about guild's pug runs. Now, is a content difficult? Normal difficulty raids are definitely not difficult. There's not an immense... amount of mechanics and they're nowhere near as difficult as raiding in retail or the warcraft they have tuned Ordua to be more difficult but this is only because they want Ordua to be relevant content for a longer period of time and the last question to answer is there a huge barrier to get into end game content i think i've more or less answered that fully to be honest but to summarize one it's much easier to gear up now if you don't join a big toxic mega server, the gear score requirement won't be too high, so you will be able to pull groups, especially as you can get so much good gear from Heroic Plus. If you're having a problem with people that don't want to play with you because you have a low gear score, join a fucking guild. Join a guild that does organize pugs to increase the chance of you getting to raid. Great idea. And be sure to make a folder on your Discord of all the pug groups on your server mm -hmm. so you can sign up early. But most importantly, guys, just chill and enjoy the game. It's not difficult to get a character leveled up and start raiding. It's not impossible. No. You have to get rid of his mindset that it's too difficult to get into the game and it's too late to start playing because it's just not. The only time when that is actually the case is when, you know, it's the last couple of months of a new expansion launching. But even then... I actually feel like the last couple months of a new expansion launch is probably the most fun of any other time. Like, I, I, I think that's whenever it's the most enjoyable. You can jump on and play the game and enjoy other pre-patch content. You just have to go through the correct loops to make your life easier and steadily progress your character. That's literally the core design of an MMO. It's the way this game is meant to be played. You can't really enjoy an MMO without a little bit of patience. If you're an impatient person and just want to jump to endgame content really quickly and you know, get gear very, very quickly, then, I mean, you have to just make friends, obviously, and get them to carry you. It's only the real way yeah. to do that. Smart. Or alternatively, go and play a MMO that is pay to win, or an MMO that just doesn't focus on end game ra GDKP. raiding content, and is more of a casual, chill, sandboxy exploration yep, and immersion there you MMO. Go. There's plenty of them out there. We'll be talking about them very soon on my channel. But anyway, guys... My name is Meta Goblin. To my next video, ciao. It's a decent video. I think that uh, WoW Classic is kind of casual friendly. Uh, obviously, like there's a lot of things about Classic WoW that are not casual friendly. Like there's so much nuance, and like everybody is expected to know everything ahead of time. 
But there's also the issue with a lot of people who they try to go out of their way to like uh, to, to join groups that are farm groups. And then they get mad that the farm group doesn't want to teach them the fight. Or the farm group isn't okay with them wiping because they don't know the fight. Stop joining farm clears as a progression player and you're not going to have this problem. You know what I mean? It's crazy. Hardcore challenge is super popping right now. I'm sure there's dozens of people that are doing it. Anyway, I'll, I'll link you guys a video again. You guys give it, give it a, give it a like, give them a sub, etc. I think this is a pretty good one. I like watching the WoW Classic stuff, even though I'm very much molding about WoW Classic. I am done with that shit until we have a new like. There's we're on a new server. Like I'm just so sick of playing with those people. I am done. Is it possible to have solutions to incentivize inviting people to raid who don't have a raid clear achievement? Why would you want to do that? Why would you want to incentivize players to handicap themselves? How does that make the game better? Yeah, it doesn't make sense. Yeah, it's it, it's dumb. Yeah.